My recipe that I'm going to make now with wine is one that I found in my mother's recipe box, which is this, and it's full of, you can see how old and brown the paper is, full of wonderful handwritten recipes that she collected through her years as a cook. And I cherish it, I love it so much. When I was looking through it, I came across a recipe for wine cake, and I thought, that is really unusual. I haven't heard of anything, so that is what I wanna make Today, it's very simple, and I think it's gonna be really neat. So in my bowl, um, and it's kind of one of those mix and match cake recipes. We're not making everything from scratch, but I'm following it exactly how she had written it out. So the first thing that goes in is one package of yellow cake mix. Just any yellow cake mix that you like, right in there. Don't add one that has the pudding or any of that, just straight up yellow cake mix. The next thing I'm going to add is one package of instant vanilla pudding. Make sure it's the instant pudding. I think if you do the cooked one, it's not going to be good. So instant vanilla pudding, that goes in. Simple enough so far. Then the recipe calls for four eggs, two I have already cracked. And I have two eggs. My eggs I got from a friend who has her own chickens. And I just think it's great when you get farm fresh eggs. Like this is, egg is sort of green. Um, they can be blue. And this is your, one was brown. But all different colored eggs when you get farm fresh. And I think it's just really neat to have something right from the farm that's real fresh. So I crack the last two. And they're going to go in. This is kind of just dump in one bowl and mix. I love it. So in go the four eggs. And then the recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of oil. I'm using a vegetable oil. That goes in. And then it calls for three quarters of a cup of sherry wine. And it will be called that. You'll see it be sherry on it. Um, three quarters of a cup of that goes right in. And then the last ingredients is some nutmeg. And when I use nutmeg, I like to use the fresh nutmeg. I think it makes a world of difference. So there's the little nut for the nutmeg. And you get yourself a little nutmeg grater. You can find them just about anywhere. And you just eyeball one teaspoon full. And it just smells so good. I use this when I make my pies or an apple cake, anything that calls for nutmeg. Oh, just, it doesn't even smell like the nutmeg you buy out of the jar. So there's your nutmeg, and then it has a handy little storage place. You just shut the cover, it's good to go. All right, now all I have to do is mix this, and then we'll put it in a bundt pan, and it's going to bake at 350 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes. You'll keep an eye on it. I'm using the paddle attachment. Got it all on. Raise up the bowl and we'll give it a little mix. Go slow in the beginning. You don't want everything flying out on you. And this recipe for the wine cake, it didn't come with any type of frosting to go with it. So I'm just gonna make a simple frosting and might use a little more wine and then decorate it with some fresh strawberries. I think at this point, once you make the cake, where you take it from there, that's your business. You can decorate it any way you want. This is almost, oh, it's so pretty. Nice and yellow from those farm eggs. All right. Okay, now let me get our pan. Using this really neat bunt pan. Um, this is the shape, so that's what the top of the cake will look like. It's hard to see, but You'll see it on the cake, but I have greased it very well and floured it. You want to get all these little corners, otherwise you'll have bits of your cake sticking in there and it won't be pretty. That's not what you want. So I clean off the paddle. I'm very excited about this. I love these old recipes. And I bet you have some in a box somewhere too. Give them a try. Okay.
Mm. I can still, I can smell the sherry and then the nutmeg. So I'm going to pour this into my pan. Try to make it even as it goes in. Looks like it wants to even itself off on its own. That's good. Look how bright and yellow that is. I think some of that's from those fresh eggs too. Scrape down my bowl. I'm not a very fast bowl scraper, apparently. Hmm. It's almost out. Because I like to get every bit when I'm watching shows and people are cooking and they leave a bunch of the batter in the bottom of the bowl. That makes me crazy. I'm like, scrape that bowl. Get that in there. That's why I'm doing this. And that truly is all there is. So I'm going to even this out. And I'm going to give it, maybe just settle it a little bit. Whoa. And now it's going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for about 40 to 50 minutes. Make sure if you test it, your cake tester comes out clean. Here is the wine cake out of the oven. Look at how cute this is. It's really adorable. Um, so what I did to give it some decoration, I made a quick glaze with confectioner's sugar. And I used some of the sherry because there's sherry in the wine cake. That's the wine. And a little vanilla. So I made this glaze and I'm going to pipe it. Just put it in a plastic bag and turn the bag over. And I'm just going to try to follow some of the ridges on the cake with the glaze. You could get really fancy with this. I'm not sure how fancy I'm going to get. But you, you see what I'm trying to do here. Just following. Those little lines that were in the pan. I think once you get going, it goes a lot faster. Okay, so you see what I'm driving at here. We just glaze the cake. It looks cute. I mean, I have a ton of this, so you could you know, you could go more. Um, I'm just really want a piece of this cake, so I'm going to stop at this. But how we're going to garnish it is with some beautiful strawberries on top. Give it some color, some height. These we've cut so they're fanned out, which looks pretty fancy. And then we'll put some whole strawberries along the bottom. A few of them. Yeah. Put one more little one there. So you can dress this up any way you want, but this is my old-fashioned wine cake. I hope you enjoy it.